Hi, what's up everybody? It's Steph from Steph Lee Films. Live streaming is the next big thing and it's super popular now. Especially the current COVID-19 situation where most people are staying at home for work and video conferences seem like the norm nowadays as a means of communication. So what is live streaming? Live streaming is the broadcasting of live video to an audience over the internet. All you need to be able to live stream is an internet enabled device like a phone, tablet or webcam and a platform such as a website or an app to broadcast on. If you have come to this video, I'm pretty sure you already own a device which is most probably the A10 Mini Pro and it's not set up to stream live. However, you might realize that the A10 Mini Pro comes with only three default streaming platforms, Facebook, Twitch and YouTube. I mean, in all honesty, these are definitely three of the most popular and best streaming platforms right now. But what if you want to do your live streaming on platforms such as Periscope, Ustream, Vimeo Live, or even the multi-streaming service Restream.io, where you can simultaneously stream video content to multiple platforms and social networks. So in this video, I will teach you how to add custom streaming platforms to the ATEM Mini Pro. So without further ado, let's dive right in. On the ATEM software control under the output tab, you can see that under the platform drop down menu, we only have three platforms, Facebook, Twitch and YouTube. So to add more platforms to this list, we have to edit the XML file which contains the codes of defining these platforms. Before it gets too complicated, so what is an XML file? To put it simply, XML file is a markup language that encodes documents so that both humans and machines can read them. You type in a set of codes that tells the machine what you want it to do. Another markup language that you are probably more familiar with is HTML. So basically, XML is something like a HTML coding language. So for this particular XML file that we need to find and edit, it is called streaming.xml. On the Mac OS, it can be found here and on Windows, it can be found here. I will be putting both links in the description below so you can just copy the links directly. On the Mac OS, go to Go, go to Folder and paste the link here. And here you can find the file streaming.xml. Okay, do take note, a lot of other YouTubers have talked about opening it with any code editor or a text editor. But I've tried it with the default text editor on Mac and it seems like the file is locked and it cannot be edited. I've tried to change its permissions, Command I, and allow read and write to the file, but I still get the same error message. It could be me, but my recommendation is just to get a more professional application to edit your XML file. The one I use and recommend is the Visual Studio Code Editor, which I will also put in the links below. The reason being it has proper lines to let you know that once you open a tag, you need to close it properly, otherwise it will have errors compiling the codes. Once you install and run the application, open the streaming.xml file with the Visual Studio Code. Don't be frightened by the massive codes that pop out right in front of you. If you take a closer look, XML codes are pretty straightforward and easy to understand. I would even go as far as saying people with no experience in coding can edit existing codes. Take note, I said edit, not code from scratch. What you want to look for is the opening tag and the closing tag. All the codes between these two tags are what you want to copy and paste. So right now, we're going to take the codes for Facebook, drag to highlight the codes between the two tags. Command C copies the text. Then we go all the way to the bottom and insert these codes by pressing Command V. Another point to note here, the closing tag has to be the last line of code because this XML file started off with the opening tag. So make sure your pasted codes are above the closing tag. So once we have this set of copied codes, we are ready to insert your custom streaming platform. For this example, I will use Restream.io, but it works with any of the streaming platforms that you use. So I will change the name from Facebook to Restream.io. We can leave the name here as default. The URL for the default server can be obtained usually from your streaming settings. So you copy and paste it here. Do take note, some streaming platforms have two servers, primary and secondary. So if your streaming platforms have two servers, I would recommend that you copy the codes from the YouTube section here. Then you can edit the primary and secondary URLs accordingly. You can also see that we changed the codes for the streaming quality here. So when you are streaming high here, you are actually streaming at 1080p at 60 frames per second with a bitrate of 9000 kilobits per second. 
having a keyframe interval of 2 means that it takes at most 2 seconds for the viewers to catch up to a point where they can properly display the feed. In simple terms, if there's a lag or packet loss, the viewer must wait 2 seconds before the next data packet arrives and continues the smooth streaming. But usually we try not to touch these settings on the XML file. But if you must, you can play around between 1 to 3 seconds to see the balance between speed and quality. So for the rest of the codes, it's again pretty straightforward. We can leave these settings as is and save the file. Then we go ahead and restart our ATEM software control app. And you can see, the new platform has been added to the existing list. As for the key, we can also obtain it from your streaming service settings and paste it here. Then we are ready to go live. A brief recap before we end this off. Step 1. Search for the streaming.xml file. Step 2. Open it with a code editor. Step 3. If you only have one server, copy the codes from the Facebook section. If you have two servers, primary and secondary, copy the codes from the YouTube section. Step 4. Change the URL of the servers accordingly. Step 5. Click File, Save and close the editor. And Step 6. Restart your ATEM software control. I know some viewers will say just scroll to this recap to save 10 minutes of your life, but well, I thought it might be useful as the saying goes to teach you how to fish instead of just fishing for you. Because understanding a concept always takes you a longer way than just following steps to do things. There you have it. I hope this video has given you a good idea of how you can custom your streaming platform on the A10 Mini Pro. As I've said this before and I will say this again, the A10 Mini Pro is definitely a piece of equipment that you will want to own if you are planning to get into live streaming or simply if you just want to upgrade your existing setup for broadcasts. Before I end this video, I would like to say that it really means a lot to me if you found the information useful and if you can give this video a like, so it encourages me to continue making such videos for you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell if you want to learn more about photography and videography on this channel. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.